Welcome back, everyone. The rumors around the NBA, and specifically the ones relating to the Lakers, are now beginning to show their true colors. For over the past month now, we've been hearing back and forth rumors regarding Malik Monk and his future with the Lakers, the possibility of Kyrie Irving becoming a Laker, and much, much more. But now, we are finally getting some clarity on them, and during the past 24 hours, we even heard directly from both Malik Monk and Kyrie Irving. We are going to talk about all of that in today's video, and really review everything we know so far relating to both of them. But real quick guys, if you have been enjoying the everyday content, be sure to drop a like, hit that subscribe button if you have not already, and click that notification bell to get updated right away when I drop a new video. Without further ado though, let's dive right into it. And we are going to begin by talking about Malik Monk and the update regarding his future with the Lakers, which could really not be any better if you are hoping for him to stay, as we finally heard from Malik Monk himself about what he plans to do during free agency. If you did not know, Malik Monk will be an unrestricted free agent and is free to sign with whatever team he wants to. In addition to that though, the Lakers can only offer him a contract worth roughly 6.3 million. And given that he could very likely get more than that from a different team, a lot of fans were worried about his future with them. Or at least they were until today anyways. Because during an interview with The Athletic that came out earlier today, Malik Monk revealed that he would be willing to take less money to remain a Laker, and that he would be way more comfortable as a Laker compared to going to a different team, even though they could pay him $5 million more. Along with that, his agent, which happens to be his brother Marcus Monk, outright told The Athletic that Malik wants to be a Laker, and that he and his brother are quote unquote, very loyal people. All of that points in the direction of him returning, and although he is not technically allowed to have any kind of conversation with the Lakers until Thursday, I think it's fairly obvious that they have already been talking. However, even though Malik Monk is definitely leaning in the direction of coming back, he is not closing the door on other teams, as he made it very clear that he will evaluate all of his options. He told The Athletic that you never know what happens, some other team could come in and hopefully tell me the same thing and maybe I get a little more minutes on that team. In addition to that, he made it very clear that a team allowing him to come in and be himself was undoubtedly his number one priority, which is not very hard to believe at all. Because as we know, the Lakers were the first team to allow him to do that, and to no surprise, he had the best year of his young career with them, averaging career high numbers all across the board. And for a guy like Malik Monk who had a rough beginning to his career, being able to be himself and be comfortable in his role is the main thing that he should be looking for. Monk entered the NBA with a lot of potential, but there had been questions regarding his IQ, his commitment to playing team ball, and what he does off the court as well. Although, Malik Monk was finally able to answer all of those during his time with the Lakers, and given that they were the only team who gave him that opportunity, it's no wonder why he wants to remain with them, even if it would mean taking less money right now. And let's be very clear about that, because even though he would be taking a pay cut right now, that does not mean he would be getting less money from them in the long run. A lot of people do not really know how contracts work in the NBA, and specifically in regard to bird rights, which are what allow a team to go over the salary cap to re-sign their own player. And there are three different versions of them, with those being non-bird rights, early bird rights, and then full bird rights. With each of them being gained by keeping a player on your roster over time, non-bird rights are acquired by keeping a player for one year, early bird rights are gained by keeping a player for two years, and then full bird rights are gained by keeping a player for three years or longer. And they progressively allow a team to pay their player more money while being over the salary cap, but with the Lakers only owning Monk's non-bird rights, they cannot give him much of a pay increase right now. Although, what many fans are failing to do here is looking into the future, which is very likely what Malik Monk is doing, as remaining with the Lakers for one more year would give them his early bird rights. That would allow them to give him a four-year contract worth well over $50 million, 
or in other words, one that would very likely be worth more in the long run compared to any contract he will be offered right now. Now there is a bit of risk here, as he will have to perform well enough to earn that contract, along with avoiding injury, but it might be one worth taking. And that is where the Lakers are at with Malik Monk. But how about with Kyrie Irving though? And well, it appears that he has officially been ruled out for them. Because according to The Athletic, Kyrie Irving is opting into his player option for the 2022-23 NBA season, and that he plans to fulfill his four-year commitment to the Brooklyn Nets. They were unable to find a viable sign and trade partner for him, as the Lakers were reportedly the only team willing to make one with them, which led to Kyrie returning for one more year in Brooklyn. And it really should not be that surprising either. I've mentioned a number of times already that Kyrie was trying to use the Lakers for leverage, and that appears to have been the case. If there is one thing we know to be true about Kyrie Irving, it would have to be with his ability to cause drama. And oh boy did he ever do that with this one. I feel like over half of the NBA world believed he would be joining the Lakers, but as it turns out, it was all simply an attempt to pressure the Nets into giving him a new contract. Which I don't see them doing anytime soon either. Kyrie will have to prove that he is focused on playing again before they, or really any other team ever offers him a long term deal. I don't blame the Lakers for getting involved here though. They're already in a bad situation with Westbrook, and I don't think Kyrie Irving would have made it worse. They really had nothing to lose here. They either found a way to trade Westbrook for Kyrie Irving, whether that was through a two or three team trade, they signed Kyrie for the taxpayer mid-level, or they simply get used for leverage. Now I do think all of this was blown way out of proportion, but then again, it did involve the Lakers and an all NBA type of talent with Kyrie Irving. With him no longer being an option though, they should turn their attention back to Malik Monk, trying to find a beneficial trade involving Westbrook, and attempting to find value for a minimum contract. Because if the Kyrie Irving and Zach Levine drama before that proved anything, it's that the Lakers have very little to no chance of acquiring a star player right now. Kyrie Irving was really the only one who even had a little bit of a chance given his situation and the drama that came with him. But with him no longer being an option, they should completely forget about trying to acquire a star player. With all of that being said though, that will conclude my update on Malik Monk, Kyrie Irving, and where the Lakers need to go from here. And what do you guys think? Are you confident in their ability to retain Malik Monk? And how do you feel about the Kyrie Irving drama? Let me know your thoughts by commenting down below and we can talk about it there. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.